Hey guys and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over a system in which we can walk through a door and once we're through it it's going to disappear and transform into a wall behind us or anything you like. So this is quite similar to something you might see in Layers of Fear. So we're going to walk through the door, as we go through it will disappear behind us and the player won't know until either they turn around or we can have a sound effect as well signifying that this has happened. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So I can get into first person, press E to open this door once we're in we've got that sound effect you don't have to have that if you don't want like I say and if we turn around the door has gone it's now a wall and we can't walk through it anymore again I'll show you again we get in go through the door and it's going to turn into a wall like so and we can't go back through so this is what we're going to make today again very customizable you can have it as a door change it to a wall or anything along those lines or change it to a window or something like that and you can include the sound effect or you don't have to if you don't want to, it's purely just a player turns around and is really confused as to where the door's gone. So this is quite a cool little concept that you see in a lot of horror games. So we're going to be making this today, it's actually quite simple, probably more simple than you think. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how we've done it. The first step we want to do is we want to create our door blueprint. So as you can see here, I have my room, I have the wall and I have the hole for the door to go into. So I want to create my door. So I'm going to right click in my content browser, go to blueprint class, I'm going to get an actor. I'm going to name this one Disappear Door BP like so, but you can just name it Door BP if that makes more sense for you. I'm going to open it up straight away, and in here we want to start creating the visuals for it. So we want to add a component and add a static mesh. I'm going to name this one Door. As it sounds, this is going to be my Door Static Mesh, which I'm using the Starter Content Door, so SM underscore Door there, like so. Then I'm going to deselect that, add a component, and I'm going to add a box collision. I'm going to name this one open door box as that's what this is going to be for it's for opening and closing the door so we have to be in this box collision in order to interact with the door and I'm giving it a name because we're also going to create another box collision in a second so like I say this is for opening and closing the door so I'm just going to scale this up to be the size I want so if the player is in this box then they can open and close the door it's very simple that's what you do so that we're just essentially starting off this video with creating a basic door so if you've already done that then you can just skip ahead in the video if you'd like I think that's going to be good for me, so I'm going to deselect it, add another component, adding another box collision like so, and this one is where we want the player to walk into for the door to turn into a wall. So a good way to test this out is to just minimize this, and I'll fully minimize it actually, and we're going to place our door into the level. So I just drag and drop it in here, rotate it this way, and my wall is on at the position of 560 on the Y, so I'm going to select my door and set its Y position to be 560. So now it's going to be perfectly in line with the wall and now I can just move it over to where I want as well. You see it's not the right size and that's just because the door isn't the right size for the door frame. So what I'm going to do is just simply scale up my door so that it fits. You don't have to do this if you don't want and if you're using your own meshes you'll probably have them already fitting perfectly but this is what I'm going to do right now. So I think that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through to this side so I can see where I want to be because obviously we want to walk through to this side for the wall to appear. Reopen my BP here and I'll just move over to this side so I can still see my screen. And I'm just going to move over the box collision to the correct side. So it's going to be this side and then move it to where I want it to be. So I think I want to be walking this far into the room before it disappears just so the player is definitely facing forwards and it's as soon as they walk into the room the door's going to disappear so they don't have a chance to back out and go back through. So I think that's going to be good for me. So I'm just going to reposition the center and then again scale it up. So once they walk through this box collision, that's when the door is going to disappear and the wall will take its place. Now you can put this wherever you want, so you can put it closer if you wanted. Again, it's up to you. Place this where you want, but I think here the player has to collide with this. There's no way they can walk around it. So I'm going to reopen this again and I think that's good. I'm going to rename this box collision to be wall box because that makes sense for me. It's the box collision for spawning in the wall. Again, name it what makes more sense for you. I'm going to compile and save that. And the final thing we want to add in is we want to add in a wall. So I'm going to add a component, after deselecting this, sorry, add component, add a static mesh. I'm going to name this one wall. And I'm going to add in the walls which I'm using. So the walls I'm using is the start content wall 400 by 400 there. You can see we've got this in. I'm going to do the same thing by minimizing this and then positioning it to where I want. So it's going to be rotated like that placed in the middle and you can see we have our wall there 
like so. I reselect it, center it a little bit more, and then you can see that it's not fully correct scale. So I just need to change the scale on the Y to be about 0.7, I think. 0.7 or 0.8. Yep, I think that's gonna be good for me. And now you can see we perfectly have this wall seamlessly in here. So this is what it's gonna look like after the door's gone. It just looks like a normal wall and you can't tell the difference at all. But we don't want it to be there by default, obviously, do we? So what we're gonna do is with the wall still selected, we're going to scroll down until we find visible. I'm just going to untick visible, meaning by default we can't see it. Compile, go back into game, and you can see the wall is not there, it's now a door. However, the collision will still be there, but we're going to fix that in a second. Go back to our blueprint here, and now let's set up A, the collision for the door at the start, and then B, opening the door that we want as well. So I'm going to go to the event graph, and off of event begin play, I'm going to drag a reference to my wall. Out of this, I'm going to set collision enabled connecting that into there like so, and the collision is gonna be no collision. So when we start the game, we're gonna have no collision on the wall like so, and it won't be visible, meaning the wall is essentially not there. We can compile and save that. Now let's set up actually opening the door. So what I'm gonna do is find some space, right click my open door box collision, add event, and add on component begin overlap. Right click it again and add event, add on component end overlap, because again, we only want to open this door if we're in this box collision. Out of other actor, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character, and this just means that we have to have this character and this player overlapping the box collision for it to work. So if you have another AI that won't fire it off, it has to be your character. I'm going to do the same for the end overlap, so this is for both of them, cast to your character. After the cast off of the begin overlap, we're going to enable input, the target itself, and player controller as get player controller, and then the cast off end overlap we're going to disable the input. And this just means that we have to be in this box collision and when we are in this box collision, we can then use our E keyboard event or your interact button, whatever you like, in order to open the door. And this just helps with optimization because if you have the input enabled everywhere, then whenever you press E, it's gonna be firing off the start of this code. It won't do anything, but it will still be firing off, which we don't really want. And then to fire off, we're gonna create an action mapping. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to edit and then project settings. And once it loads, I'm going to go down to input down here under engine. And you can see I already have an interact button here. This is from previous tutorials, so I'll delete it and then remake it. So we hit the plus action mapping here. I'm going to name this one interact. I'm going to change it to be the E keyboard event. And you can change this to be E, F, left mouse button, anything along those lines, but E is most common. And I'm going to close that like so. Then I'm going to right click here and we can search for if we just named it. So I named mine interact and now we have the input action interact like so so that works perfectly now what we're going to do is hold down g and left click to get a gate with the enter being the pressed of our action mapping there open being enable input and close being disable input so essentially we have to be pressing our interact button while inside the box collision in order to exit this gate which means open the door so we walk in the box collision the gate's open and we leave the box collision the gate's closed and obviously you can't enter a gate if it's closed. So just think about it logically in real life. The gate's closed, you can't walk through it. If it's open, you can walk through it. And to walk through it, you have to press the input action here. Out of exit, like I say, we want to be opening our door. So we're going to get a timeline. So add timeline like so. I'm gonna name this door timeline. Now in this, I'm not gonna be setting up closing it as well. However, if you did want to close it and not just open it, you can come at the exit, get a flip-flop, a we're going to play and B we're going to reverse like so. So actually I may as well just keep it since I've done it. This will then mean you can open and close the door because our flip-flop just toggles between two values of A and B. We're going to double click the timeline to open it up. I'm going to set the length to be one and that just means it's going to take one second to play this animation. I'm going to add a float track by pressing the F there. I'm going to name this one door track like so. And I'm just going to simply right click on the timeline Add key to curve float, the time of zero, the value also of zero. Right click, add another key, time of one as it's at the end, and a value also of one. So we're going from the start of our timeline all the way to the end, which is going to take two values to open and close the door. So we can close the timeline like so. And then out of the door track, what I'm going to do is get a lerp and a lerp float. That going into the alpha, not the A, and this is going to go between the values of A and B. A and B want to be our open and close values. 
So I'm going to go to the viewport here, select my door, and the door here is closed. So this is the closed value. And so the rotation on the Z, as we want to rotate it on the Z like that, that is zero. So I can put A as zero, as A is the closed value, B is the open. So A can stay as zero. We go back, we'll get our open value. So open for me, I want to be there, which is 100. So the Z for open, I'm going to set to be 100 on the B, like so. So now it's going to go from the values of 0 to 100, which will rotate our door perfectly. To actually rotate the door, we need to get a reference to our door. So drag and drop door, and then set relative rotation, like so. Connecting that to the update of the timeline. So whenever it goes through the timeline, new rotation, we're going to right click and split the structure bin, add in the Z onto the return value there. So it's going to go between 0 and 100 on the rotation of the Z for the door therefore opening and closing it. And so now that is how we're going to open and close our door. So sorry if it seems like I went through that a little bit quickly, it's just I've gone over this many many times and I imagine you probably already have this set up, however if you don't, this is how you do it obviously. So I've still gone through it and I hope you did manage to understand this. If you didn't of course always let me know in the comments down below and I will help you out. But this is opening and closing the door, so I'm just going to select this and hit C to comment it, naming this comment open slash close door that makes sense like so. However, like I say, we're probably not going to need to close it as it's going to disappear anyway. So now let's set up transforming the door into a wall. This is also very simple. So what we can do is we can right click on our wall box collision here, so the box collision we have for the wall, add event, add on component begin overlap. Now we don't need an end overlap for this as we're not going to leave it, we're just as soon as we walk into this box collision, the wall will appear. Other actor, we're again going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. So again, if an AI walks into this, the door isn't going to change to a wall, it's only when your player walks through it. Then after this, we want to drag and drop a reference to our wall here. And out of this, we're going to set the visibility. So you remember at the start, we made the visibility false, so we can no longer see it. Now we want to tick new visibility, so we can see it. We're going to come out the wall again, and also set collision enabled with a new type, being collision enabled. So we can now see it and also collide with it so we won't be able to walk through the wall. It is a solid object which is there. So, so as far as the player is aware, the door was never there. It's always been a wall and it is a solid wall. What we also want to do is stop the timeline. So we can get our components list down here and then drag and drop our door timeline in or whatever you named it and get door timeline. And out of this, we're going to get a stop. And the reason we're stopping this is because we're going to delete the door in a second. So we get rid of the door and replace it with a wall. We want to delete it. However, if we delete the door while we're still opening it, so if the player walks through while it's opening, it's going to try and move the door while it isn't there, which obviously we don't want to do because the door's not there, so that's going to give us some errors. Everything else will still work perfectly, but it will give you an error, which we don't want, obviously. So what we're going to do is stop the timeline so it doesn't want to move anymore. And then after we stop the timeline, we want to delete the door. So we're going to select the door, open door box, and wall box up in the top left components list up here. Drag and drop them in, and then out of one of these we can just drag off and destroy component. As like I say, we want to be deleting these three here, and just connect all of those into the target there. So all we're going to be left with is just the wall, so now in this blueprint, all there is is the wall. And that's the code done, however if you want to add a sound effect as well, we can come out of this and play sound at location, again you don't need to do this if you don't want. Sound asset, I'm just going to have as whatever I chose earlier, which is this one, and I'll leave a link to this in the description down below, as it's from freesound.org. So I'm using that, and the location will just be get actor location, like so. Again, that part is completely optional, if you'd rather the player find out by themselves instead of a sound effect, then that's completely fine. I'm going to select this and hit C to comment it, naming it transform door into wall. We can compile and save that. We can minimize it and we can hit play to test this out. So I'm going to go into first person, walk up to the door, if I press E, the door's going to open. That rotated the, the way I didn't want. However, we can just switch it around and if we walk through, we've got the sound effects, we turn around and the door's gone. It's now a wall and we can't walk through it again. So you may notice that there's a little bit of a gap there. That's just me not scaling the door properly. So I'm going to reopen it up what we can do is then select the wall and scale it to be 0 0.8 on the Y instead of 0 0.7. Compile that and I'm also going to rotate this to switch it around 
so it rotates the other way. Now I can just put minus 100 in the values instead, however that's easier for me. However obviously if I rotate it like that then the box goes on the wrong side so I will just put minus 100 in the B value here. Minus 100 there, we go in and it's going to open that way. We walk through, we've got a sound effect and the door is gone. You can see that gap is gone there as well, I just scaled it wrong. So this works perfectly. So let me show you this again, but I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. We've created a door in which we can open it up, walk through, and then as we turn around the door will have gone and we're now left with a wall instead. Now this lighting glitch here is just because I'm using the starter content walls, I haven't really put them together properly and I haven't built the lighting or anything either. So it's just a very quick building which I put together roughly, however the door itself works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, Make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.